November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike Ground School. It's that time of year again when we really need to pay attention to the weather, because there is some. Well, there's always weather, but I mean the kind that can make for a really bad day. You're going to need to know how to gather and interpret weather information, uh, forecasts and all the things once you get your pilot's license and for your tests. And once you do, you'll be fully prepared to fill in for the evening weatherman. This video covers the METAR. There's not much agreement about what it stands for anymore, but it's a meteorological report, and then it's encoded with all sorts of useful information. Knowing how to decode one, though, is required for your tests. But in real life, you can usually find one that's already decoded. But where's the fun in that, right? So by the end of this video, you're going to know how to decode a METAR, but then make a decision from what you decode. So let's fly right in, shall we? Here's a METAR. Let's do some hammer time on this. It's for Seattle, and the first section tells you where it's from, and it tells you SeaTac, right? K-S-E-A. The next block tells you the date and time of the report. The first two digits give you the date, which is the fourth of the month. It doesn't really tell you much else. And then the next four digits are for the Zulu time, 1253. Now, Seattle in the summer is minus seven, so it's 5.53 a.m. local time. The next block tells you wind direction and speed in knots. It's coming from 180 due south at 12 knots. The 10 SM tells you that the visibility is at least 10 statute miles. Visibilities are always given in statute miles, not nautical miles. 10 is the highest reportable number, and so it could very well be 121, but 10 is all we ever get. The next bit tells you about the clouds. BKN means broken. The 027 is in hundreds of feet above the ground, so it's 2,700 broken. The lowest broken layer is the ceiling. So with 10 miles of visibility and 2,700 foot ceilings, we are VMC. Then it goes on to say that it's overcast at 3,300. Uh, there could be other cloud blocks, uh, but they're kind of self-explanatory, really. You might get few SCT instead of BKN or OVC, but the cloud heights are always given in height above the ground, not from sea level. The next block with the slash is temperature and dew point in Celsius. It's 11 degrees and the dew point's 8. The next block's your altimeter setting, 2983 inches mercury. So we're just slightly less than standard, aren't we? What is standard, by the way? Long pause. 2992, isn't it? RMK means remarks. The AO2 tells you about the station capability. AO2 can tell you what type of precipitation it is, like, you know, rain, snow, or whatever. RA means rain, and ended, E means ended, and, and this happened at 40 minutes past the hour. SLP is sea level pressure in millibars, which isn't terribly useful, but it's the last two digits and a decimal. SLP is always a thousand and something, and these three digits give you the tens, the ones, and the tenths place. So it's 1,010.7 millibars which is just over one bar. The last block repeats the temperature and dew point again, but in tenths of a degree Celsius. So it's 10.6 and the dew point's actually 8.3. Now one thing you need to know here though, is the one or zero. Zero is for positive values and one is for negative values. Weird, I know. The zero here means that it's 10.6 degrees Celsius. If it were a one, then it'd be minus 10 degrees. Same thing with the dew point. If there's a leading one instead of a zero, then it's negative. And that's all for the Seattle METAR. Let's do another one. This one for Oklahoma City, also on the fourth of the month at 1352 Zulu, or just before 9 a.m. local. The wind is 170 at 17 knots, but it's gusting to 25 with a little G. Visibility is at least 10 statute miles, and there are a few clouds at 2000, some scattered clouds at 3600, and then the broken ceiling is at 25,000. We don't need to worry about that one today. The temperature is 2.2 and the dew point is 1.9. Altimeter is 2.963. The remarks, precipitation discrimination station, tells us that the sea level pressure is 1,001.9 millibars. Whatever. And the precise temperature is positive 22.2 and dew point is 19.4. I bet this is starting to make sense, right? 
it's always in the same order and the content of the blocks gives you kind of a clue about that block. If you see a Z at the end of the block, we're talking about times, Zulu. If there's a KT, that block's about wind speeds. SM is statute miles, which we use to measure visibility. FEW, SCT, BKN, OVC are all sky coverage terms, so you know that block's talking about cloud coverages and the height of the cloud base, right? A slash is a temperature and a dew point, and an A is for the altimeter. Then the remarks tells you, well, the remarks. <laughs> Some of that doesn't matter, and I can guarantee that you really do not need to know the temperature to the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius. Okay, let's do one from Addison, Texas. KADS. Read this one out loud, and then I'm going to give you the answer. Long pause. Okay, how do you think you did? Hopefully that wasn't too terribly difficult. On the 4th at 1447 Zulu, wind is 100 at 11, 8 mile visibility, overcast 500, temp and dew point 20, and altimeter 2975. So what do we have here? Fog and low clouds. With the temperature and dew point converging, you get clouds. Clouds are visible moisture, and clouds near the ground are fog. So that restricted our visibility a bit, didn't it? We can't go VFR, can we? Because we can't maintain the cloud clearance of 500. All right, what about one from Stewart, Florida? Dog's barking. What's the highest you can fly and maintain VFR in Class D airspace everywhere? It's 2484 AGL. Clouds are given in height above the ground, and Stewart's only 16 feet above sea level. You need 500 feet below the clouds in class D. So we subtract 500 from the few clouds at 3000 and get 2500 MSL. And our height over the ground, of course, is only 2484. Check out my video on VFR weather minimums uh, for more info on all of that. But anyway, that's how you read a METAR. There are many other abbreviations that you'll run across. Some of them are quite interesting, but they're all the basic ones that I covered here. You can find METARs on the side of the airport page and air nav, or you can go to aviationweather.gov and get everything you need uh, weather flight planning related there. Sky Vector will have METARs on the text weather layer. They're nearly everywhere and you need to know how to decode them. The best way of course to learn how to decode them is to practice decoding some. So go do that. The link uh, to the key for the METAR codes and many many more are down in the video description. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll certainly help me out, as we'll leave in a bunch of comments down below and engaging in lively discussions. And maybe snagging a shirt and checking out Patreon. But thanks for staying with me on Ground Point Mike.